Welcome back to the RAS CCS and Behind the Knife Journal Club on Landmark Papers and Surgery. I'm Elizabeth Carpenter, a general surgery resident from San Antonio Military Medical Center, and I'll be discussing today the results of a 2004 randomized control trial published in the Annals of Surgery investigating pylorus preserving pancreatic duodenectomy versus the standard Whipple procedure for patients with pancreatic and periampulary tumors. The history of surgery for pancreatic cancer dates back to the Italian surgeon Godavilla and German surgeon Koch, the latter of whom published a description of a partial pancreatic duodenectomy in 1912. This technique was refined by the American surgeon Alan Whipple, who we all know, who published his description of what is now the standard Whipple operation in 1935 and which he continued to work on into the 1940s. Watson in 1944 described the pylorus preserving pancreatic duodenectomy. In contrast to a standard Whipple, which includes removal of part of the stomach and formation of a gastrojejunostomy, the pylorus sparing version preserves the entire stomach, pylorus valve, and a duodenal cuff, eventually leading to a duodenojejunostomy. Traverso and Longmire introduced this technique in the 1970s for chronic pancreatitis as well. Ongoing debate since has described the potential benefits of the pylorus preservation. These include better GI function with greater weight gain and less dumping, a shorter and potentially simpler procedure, and perhaps less intraoperative blood loss. Critics, however, suggested that this pylorus preservation, though, may come at a cost of higher rates of delayed gastric emptying and positive resection margins. Survival rates, at least, appear to be equivalent in these retrospective series. The prospective data at the time of this trial was heterogeneous. The authors hypothesized the following. Patients undergoing pylorus preserving pancreatic duodenectomy versus a standard Whipple for suspected resectable periampulary or pancreatic cancer would experience reduced operative time, less blood loss, shorter length of stay, and greater physiologic food passage. The design of the trial consisted of a prospective multi center randomized control trial comparing the two operative approaches. This trial was conducted at both small and large volume centers in the Netherlands from January 1992 to December 2000 and the investigators followed patients out from surgery up to 115 months post-op for outcomes. Inclusion of criteria included the following. Patients with suspected pancreatic or periampulary cancer, and these lesions needed to be resectable by imaging criteria, which could be either CT or MRI. Exclusion criteria included a previous gastric resection, distant METs or local unresectability, tumors with direct invasion of the pylorus or stomach, or positive peripyloric lymph nodes. Of note, patients who ultimately had lesions other than periampulary or pancreatic cancer on pathology were excluded in the survival analyses. Randomization was performed by a blind envelopes containing the protocol for either operation and used sequentially for each patient. Envelopes were distributed in the OR only after it was confirmed that both operative techniques could be performed. 87 were randomized to the pylorus preserving pancreatic duodenectomy, whereas 83 were randomized to the standard Whipple. Two patients in the pre, uh, pyloric preserving pancreatic duodenectomy group were converted to a standard Whipple due to a possible duodenal involvement, but they remained in the pylorus preserving group for analysis. Postoperative management was standardized and included stress ulcer prophylaxis a drain at the PJ and HJ, the NGT was removed when production was less than 200 mils per 24 hours, and delayed gastric emptying was defined as gastric stasis requiring nasogastric tube decompression for 10 days or more. Importantly, adjuvant therapy was not routinely given to these patients. 19, and this was 10 in the standard Whipple and 9 in the pylorus preserving group, received post-op chemo rads in conjunction with another clinical trial. All specimens were reviewed for final diagnosis and resection margin positivity. Patients were followed every three months after their operation with study follow-up completed in May 2002. The primary endpoints of the study were blood loss, operative time, and hospital length of stay. Secondary endpoints included delayed gastric emptying and survival. As discussed, a total of 83 patients and 87 patients were included in the standard Whipple and pylorus preserving categories respectively. No differences were observed in any of the primary outcomes of the study, and this included blood loss, operative time, and hospital length of stay. Additionally, no differences were observed between the two study groups for delayed gastric emptying. 
Ultimately, 69 patients in the standard ripple group and 72 patients in the pylorus preserving group were determined to have a pathologic diagnosis of either periampulary or pancreatic cancer. Long-term follow-up was conducted for those 134 out of 141 patients with a median follow-up of 18.5 months. Overall, disease-free survival was similar in both treatment groups with a median disease-free survival of 14 months in the standard group and 15 months in the pylorus preserving group. Overall survival between the two groups was also similar, as shown in figure two. Periampulary cancer was diagnosed in 44 patients. Median survival in the standard Whipple group was 17 months versus 29 months in the pylorus preserving group, which was also not statistically significant. Finally, 90 patients had pancreatic cancer. Median overall survival was 11 months in the standard group and 12 months in the pylorus preserving group with no statistical differences between the two. Additionally, there were no statistically significant difference in tumor resection margins between the two groups. One criticism of this trial was the use of length of stay, operative time, and operative blood loss as primary outcomes. Other studies had used delayed gastric emptying as a primary outcome, which may explain some conflicting conclusions. Additionally, in this trial, most patients did not receive adjuvant therapy in the form of either chemo or chemo rads, which may limit generalizability of these results. And then finally, blood loss documented in this trial with a median of two liters is notably higher than expected, with the authors quoting two times higher than in other reports at large centers of the time. Notably, the authors state in their discussion that in comparison to other multi-center studies, there are fewer differences. In conclusion, according to this trial, the standard Whipple and pylorus preserving pancreatic oduodenectomy are associated with comparable perioperative factors, postoperative recovery and complications, resection margins in both disease-free and overall survival in patients undergoing an operation for suspected resectable pancreatic and periampulary cancer. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on Twitter, and don't forget to review this content with the current This Week in SCORE module, and thanks for listening.